I have a severe problem. After the return from my Danube river bicycle trip, I found this is in my lab. Plenty of stuff which arrived the last five weeks when I was uh, cycling around. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. We started our journey in Donau-Eschingen in Germany, followed the Atlantic to Black Sea number 6 route and cycled 3000 kilometers and 14000 meters altitude difference on paved and unpaved roads to Constanza at the shore of the Black Sea. On our way we saw beautiful landscapes, had to cross the Danube River several times, met with many lovely people and of course also some of my viewers. We had to survive adventures, saw many hotel rooms and always got healthy food and enough to drink. I even discovered an IoT device to call the waiter. In Romania I met with my friend Florin who produces the YouTube channel Voltlog. And finally I returned in a three days train journey to my lab. So let's start to bring some order into this whole mailbag here. First I bought a few breadboards recommended by my viewers from R&D Components. They said that uh, they are very well and I will do a test about the different breadboards in a future video. So I do not cover this more in this mailbag. Then I got a Ivis crimper also recommended by viewers. It was recommended as an alternative to this engineer a PA09 crimper and maybe I will do a short video about that. So let's start with the rest. The first one is a very expensive one. It is a Chowl Scope and I backed this on Kickstarter. So let's open it. Nice package. Heart. Now what's inside? What is a gyroscope? A small device from Jet Perch. It is a precision DC energy analyzer. It has four banana plugs in and out. And here it has a USB connector and here a few additional pins for other usage. This here is an additional front panel for USB connectors and it can be mounted here instead of this one if I want to work with USB connectors. This was not part of the gyroscope, I had to buy it in addition. Regular viewers might remember this OTI, increase battery life of your IoT devices and apps. And this is basically the same thing. It is a little bit bigger than the child scope, but they are both the same. They have input and output power and we can measure very low currents with these kind of devices. I made already a video about uh, measuring small currents, not with these two, but with those two devices, with the microcurrent gold and the current ranger. Now I have four different devices and I will test also these two and compare them once. They are definitely more expensive in the, in the range of $500 and these are in the range of $100. Now for makers, this is probably uh, the better choice. Here you have to use an oscilloscope for visualization and here you get software for both. The software I think makes also a big difference between these and these. 
So stay tuned for the comparison between the two. And here is a package from Germany from a viewer from Berlin. So these are ESP32 Echo Power boards from radioshuttle.de and they contain a ESP32 and a LoRa board and some other stuff. And a battery compartment for a 3 volt lithium battery and here is the FTDI adapter. So it's not on this board and we understand now together with this with the name Echo these are very low power devices which can use Wi-Fi. This is not really low power but with LoRa it gets quite low power. I got two of these boards because they are quite special and not the boards itself but the software which come with them. Here you see the different topologies you can use with the software provided with the boards. One thing I have to say, the software itself is not completely open source. For the moment, as I understood, you get an activation code with each board and you only can use it with this activation code. So it has a, an activation in the cloud. But nevertheless, the idea I think is interesting because these modules can connect either to a gateway or amongst themselves. Many subscribers ask me about meshes and so on. I think this is possible with this radio shuttle protocol here. Quite innovative. Here it's a gateway but it has nothing to do with LoRa. It is basically just a local gateway and it, it does not need anything outside your home or your factory. And Helmut even sent me a small stand laser cut where you can place the board. Very nice. Thank you Helmut for these boards. The next one I ordered on Tindy. It comes from the Netherlands. Jasper wrote me that he included two solar harvesting boards one with supercapacitors and the other one with Lion. I only had to pay the Lion one and he added this supercapacitor type. They use the same chip, but one is for supercapacitors and the other one is just for Lion batteries. Like that I can do a comparison between the two. This is Jasper and these are the two boards. One for Lyon batteries and one for supercapacitors. And they use the AEM109 for one chip. It can use very low voltages from solar cells, even indoors, and store it in supercapacitors, Lyon cells, and so on and so on. And it has uh, voltage regulators for 1.8 and 2.4 to 4.2 volts on the board. I anyway plan a energy harvesting video and this is a very good addition. Also recommended by a few viewers to use this chip also in the comparison. And EPs is the manufacturer. I never heard about them before. They seem to be specialized in in, um, in energy harvesting from thermal, from vibration, from RF, uh, but this one is from photovoltaic. These are not cheap chips here. Also the other energy harvesting chips were well above $10, so this seems to be an area where we do not get below $10. Maybe the series are small or I cannot imagine, but maybe also the chips are complicated, but I think this is, these are special chips with low volumes and then this is why they are so expensive. The next one is also a big one, well packaged. It is a network K2 
cable tester. It was also a tip of one of my viewers and this one is similar to the last one. It can test all wires of the Ethernet cables. This one had the additional feature that it is able to detect cables and this one is able to detect broken cables and also the length of a cable. And uh, I'm interested in how they do it and also if it works. So first I use a small patch cable and connect it locally here. I do a wire map. It tests very quickly and it shows the wire map. So we know this is a normal cable. Now the th second test is and test it. So a remote is found and it also shows that it works. The interesting thing is this beeps if it's connected. And this is maybe something similar to this one here where we have this antenna detector and this one you can just connect to several cables and then you know which one is connected to the tester. If you are in the server room for example and you do not, not know which one is which. Also an, innov an innovative solution for the problem of cable detection. Now I want to test if it is able to test the length and it tests. All are 1.2 meters long and I just check it with the meter. It is actually a little bit more than 1.2 meters, it's 1.27 meters. But uh, this is still uh, quite interesting for me that it finds it out. Now let's check a longer one. Here I have a long one and here I have a shorter one. So let's check the shorter one. Twelve point four meters. The other one same here, thirty one meters. Now I have to check. Now I unwound the shorter one. Let's check. Eleven point eight meters. So it's a uh, pretty close, but it's only five meters long. So this is completely wrong. It shows 11 meters and it's only 5 meters long. You can calibrate. This is a 10 meter cable and now you can adjust it. But you cannot adjust it to 10 meters. So something is wrong. I tried it also with a 5 meter cable, same effect. So I think this cable tester is okay if you want to have the same functions as this one. The results are presented nicely here, but uh, this uh, length measurement uh, does not work. This one is a little bit more expensive. It is $20 for the set. Next one. Extremely well packaged but may be necessary. These are a bunch of very small solar panels and uh, they are intended for my harvesting video. So let's check one out and I have to connect these wires to the pins here or to the pads here and uh, I use my new Nipex stripper very nice stripper. It was the best stripper of the comparison I made in an earlier video. So this is now my default uh, tool in my toolbox. So with the bench supply it has 0.76 and with the new torch it has 1.2 volt. Here is the listing. 10 pieces are roughly five dollars and they are one volt 80 milliampere so um, 
we will see with the harvesting module if we get anything out of them. Next one. These are PAM8406 digital amplifiers. I wanted to have a few of them for my experiments because when I created this fake Alexa, I needed a loudspeaker and a, therefore an amplifier and I wanted to stock up a little bit my amplifiers. Here is the listing, 2 times 5 watt, which is probably a little bit exaggerated, but anyway, this is not necessary for my uh, purpose, but the price is incredibly cheap, 50 cents per piece, so I have three of them. Next one, small things with a USB connector, I assume. Yes, it has a USB connector and it has a 32U4 chip, an Atmel chip on it. This is an Arduino Leonardo chip, which has a USB interface and this can be used for various things. We have some pins broken out here, but it can also be used as a bad USB and other things. So I bought two of them just uh, for experiments or if I want to have a very small um, USB capable chip. The other one is more or less the same. It just uh, uses a different uh, version of the chip. From what I see, one of them is a little bit cheaper, I think. Here is the listing of the one with the small chip. And here is the listing with the, the bigger chip. But um, this one is $4.17 and the other one is $3.69. So I assume we can go with this one here. They come in my box with the Leonardos. Next one. So these are the basic switches, just very normal switches, but in many projects I need switches and I wanted to have some with different colored push buttons and you just Mount the push button like that, I assume. Yes, it has a very distinct point for um, switching. This is what I like. And it is round, much easier to mount for me because the square switches are always a little bit more complicated like that. I can use a drill or my reamer to create a exact fitting hole. This is the listing. 100 pieces cost uh, roughly $7 and they are 12 by 12 millimeters. So this is incredibly uh, cheap, I think, for 100 pieces. Next one. These are simple micro USB connectors and they are necessary for Raspberry Pis because you have micro USB and if you want to, to use normal USB stuff, you need one of those. Because these adapters do not work because they are too big if you need two of them. So this is a perfect thing if you need one or two normal USB connectors for a Raspberry Pi. This is the listing, half a dollar plus shipping. Next one. Can you guess what this is? It is a replacement part for cars and it is a electromagnetic component which translates electricity in mechanical movement. So let's try it. I bought two of them, one with five wires and one with two wires. You see the green and the blue are the same here and here. And here we have three additional. Now let's connect 12 volt to these two here. 
like that it extends and if we reverse polarity it retracts but it does not block you still can move it if no current is applied the maximum current is quite high more than 3 ampere because my power, bench power supply is only capable of uh, delivering 3 ampere now what are these three these belong to a switch inside the device and this is ground and this is a normally open and this is a normally closed switch so if you manually move here or here then you get a contact so this is uh, for a feedback loop it's probably a good idea that you interrupt the current if you reach the other position now with this one you do not have this uh, feature i have no usage so far but maybe it will appear in one of the future projects by the way i discovered those in a video of colin first the two wire costs 3.66 plus 0.1 shipping and the five wire is was at least slightly more expensive and definitely it's worth to use the five wire because it's even cheaper now it is on sale obviously next one antennas without a marking so let's check them so you see it is around 430 megahertz is a dip here so let's check a little bit closer so you see it's 431.5 around and the SWR is 2.5 but if you come a little bit in the area of the antenna you see it moves quite a lot so it's definitely a 433 megahertz antenna but it's heavily influenced also by the environment as usual probably not a perfect antenna but uh, good enough if the SWR is uh, around 2.0 it's okay for our small powers the other one behaves very similar so both are 433 megahertz antennas just to show you a little bit how delicate measuring of antennas is and also the behavior of antennas I added now a small pigtail cable and the resonance frequency is now much higher you see here and if I ground the antenna here just with my fingers you see the SWR is nearly 1.0 and um, but the resonance frequency is also a little bit higher so if you deal with IoT devices which are not installed in a fixed location you see what can happen here if you if you just add a small a small antenna connector or if you ground what you should do ground this point here the antenna performance changes completely this is the listing two pieces 433 that is okay it's for example for LoRaWAN or whatever but usually our LoRaWAN is 868 but I have also some modules on 433 so they are okay and they are very cheap next one contains obviously batteries and it is a USB AA times 2 whatever this means uh huh. They are USB batteries. An, interest, an interesting concept. I already purchased a 9 volt battery with a similar principle. They can be charged with a micro USB and they behave like a 9 volt battery. And this was a tip of one of my viewers that he was quite happy with them. I doubt it, frankly and you see here how it works this one here has a normal USB connector which can charge them and like that they should behave as normal batteries 
Now the problem of those is quite obvious. They include a small Lion battery plus some electronics. And if we measure the weight, it is 21 grams. A normal alkaline battery weighs 45 grams and has no electronic. So the chance that they have the same capacity is very, very low. And really, I measured it and it was way below 800 milliampere hour. So this is, at least this here, is clearly a fake. But maybe if you have applications which do not need too much current, it could be a possibility. But on the other hand, if an application does not need a lot of current, maybe also one of those lasts for a very long time. This is the listing for a 9 volt battery. It costs in single quantities. It costs seven dollars and this was the listing of the other ones. This item is no more available. I bought it at a Lee Tokala flagship store. So this should be a reliable supplier. At least it supplied very good um, Lion batteries, but obviously it's no more available because I think I know the reason if you compare one of those with one of those cheap IKEA normal nickel metal hydride batteries, the rechargeable batteries, then it's quite obvious the capacity here is way bigger than this one. The only advantage could be that you can charge this one on a USB charger. This one you have to have a special charger, but most of us have such a charger on hand, so the usage of those batteries is really very, very limited, I think. Here I do not have an equivalent of a 9 volt uh, rechargeable battery, but uh, as far as I know, they exist too. And then it's also not quite clear why you should buy such a, a battery. The only possibility could be that you have here a power indicator if you press the button here, but obviously. This one is also discharged and I charged it before, before I left for my, my bike, bicycle trip. So they discharge also quite fast. So this is a complete useless technology because if you want to have an, a usage with low uh, energy, then it should not discharge itself a lot. This was the first part of the mailbag. The second part will follow in a few weeks. As always, you find the links to the products in the video description. Bye!